Reading so that other people in the department can see. That's the request from the department head. Okay. So let's start by reviewing what we have learned from last uh, last class on Wednesday. What did we learn? English. English. Yeah. Good. <laughs> first, first and foremost, we learned about uh, vector, right? And I told you that there's uh, two kinds of um, system, a scalar and a vector. And scalar has no direction, a vector has one direction, right? And we talk about uh, operation of vectors. We start by using a dot product, cross product, del, del product, and Laplacian. Okay? We talk about del, we talk about Laplacian, and this kind of operator as well. Okay? And at the end of the class last uh, on Wednesday, we talk about overall, um, overall picture of the class. The class is divided into three parts, uh, momentum, energy, and mass transport. Each part uh, similar in structure, okay? So we have each part, um, each kind of transport phenomena is consisting of two kind of mechanisms, molecular transport and bulk transport. Molecular transport does not require a media, does not require a body. It can, I mean, it, it does not require the body of the medium to move. You can have a conduction through the stationary medium. But for the bulk transport, the medium must be moved. The medium that I talk about is simply fluid. The fluid carries energy, carry mass out, right? And then we talk about uh, several chapters in the, t in the book. We start with a relationship between measure variables and transport variables. Just like in energy transport, measure variable is temperature, transport variable is energy. How can these two variables can be correlated? That would be in chapter one. Chapter two is chill balance. That means we divide the system into small parts, set up the balance equation over that small parts, and then integrate that small part all over the place. We can get, at the result, we will get uh, a profile, right? And last, the third part is uh, equation, the use of equation that can give exact results as a uh, use of shell balance, and then, and so on, okay? So, for today, I'd like to start by something I forgot on Wednesday. I forgot to talk about this kind of thing, tensor. Do you know what tensor is? Yes? Yes? Okay. About vector, you know vector, right? And we said on Wednesday that vector A can be written as a combination of three vectors, three unit vectors. And unit vectors, conventionally, we use i, j, and k, corresponding to axis x, y, and z, okay? And this unit vector has the dimension of, I mean, has a size of one. And the axis or the direction is corresponding to x, y, and z axis, okay? Um, more commonly, people sometimes like to change the i, j, k to del i, del one, del two, and del three. Simply because in, in three-dimensional space, we have three kind of system, Cartesian, cylindrical, and spherical. All three system, in all three system, we have three axes, right? So it is a little bit difficult to use I in cylindrical system. So commonly, we, we just want to change them to something more common. So del one, del two, and del three are basically unit vector. Okay? Now, if I have del 1 and del 2 dotted together, what would you get? Zero. What about if I have del 1 and del 1 dot together? One. one. That means the size is one. What about direction? There is no direction. There is no direction. 
the dot product would give you a scalar, right? How about cross product? If I have uh, del 1 crossed by del 2, for example, the result would be a vector. That vector would be perpendicular to the plane formed by del 1 and del 2. Okay? So dot product would give you zero direction. Cross product would give you one direction. Right? Now, there's another kind of product. This is called the added product. Simply bring, bring two unit vectors together. And these two are combined and considered as one. Okay? This kind of thing would have two directions. Just like in this picture. If you have axis X, Y, and Z in Cartesian, the unit dead, which is written as del 1, del 2, all together, is consisting of two directions, one along one axis, the other along two axes. These two are not two vectors. These two are considered one single entity. Okay? So this kind of thing has one size, two directions. It is called tensor. So in summaries, we have scalar, that means size, no direction. Vector, with vector has a size and one direction. And tensor, which has a size and two directions. Okay? And we will use tensor a lot in momentum transport. If you start by scalar, scalar can be represented by one single number because it has no direction. For vector, vector can be represented by three unit vectors combined. Okay? So this is general form of vector. For tensor, however, it has nine combinations of directions. So tensor can be written off like something like this. It is consisting of nine components. One, 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 two, one, three, and so on until you get three, three. Okay? So the number tau one, 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 two, one, three here are basically the component coefficient that you have to multiply with the unit tensor. The whole thing here is considered unit tensor. Okay? Same thing here. Or there. And please note that unit tensor del 1, 2 is not the same as unit tensor del 2, 1. Because del 1, 2 would look something like this. Del 1, del 2. For del 2, 1, it would look something like this. Okay. They're not the same. All right. Now that's what I forgot to mention on Wednesday. Now let's start transport phenomena. Consider the system like this. Before I go into that, let, let's start drawing a pipe. Okay, if you have a pipe and you have water 
flowing inside a pipe. If I say that this is y direction, this is x direction, just ignore the sphericity of the pipe for the moment. Do you think that the water here should have velocity, right? It should have velocity. What is the direction of velocity? Positive x, right? That should be velocity in x direction. Okay? Is there any velocity in y direction? As long as this one is lamina, can you imagine putting some kind of a piece of floating plastic which has the exactly the same density as the liquid so it does not sink or float? If you put this kind of uh, tracer in the liquid, how does this thing move? It should move from the left hand side to the right hand side along with the current, right? Along with the stream. So it's moved straight from left to the right. Does it move upward and downward? No. That means these particles, as long as it has the same density as the water, it should have only one single velocity component, right? And that single velocity component should go along x direction. Now, in general, vel velocity is the vector. So it is consisting of Vx, Vy, and Vz component in Cartesian. In cylindrical, there are Vr, V theta, and Vz component. These three components combined, you should get one single vector. And vector would have size and direction. All right? If velocity component y and z are equal to zero, that means your net vector should have the same direction as x-axis, right? Okay. Now let's get back to this. If I have, let's say, water in between two large plates. If I have big plate perpendicular to the screen here, on the bottom and on top here, and in the middle there's a water. At t equal to zero, I mean, if before t equal to zero, everything stands still, there's no movement. At t equal to zero, you start pulling the bottom plate from the left to the right. If you pull this plate, this is a plate, a solid plate, with constant velocity v, what should happen? Any idea? If you pull this plate to the right, what would happen? Do you think the water here would flow? Can you, have you tried this? Um, let's say, suppose you have